welcome to this screencast on what's new in C-Line 2016.3. C-Line continues to run out support for C++11 and now C++14 language features, and in this release we've made many improvements. First, use it to find literals. In this example we're going to use Howard Hennant's excellent date library, which extends standard chrono with date functionality. Well, we can see these date and year suffixes here, well now C-Line is aware of them too. For example, if we place the caret on the underscore y suffix, we can bring up the quick docs for the operator, or jump to the definition, right in the library code. And if we define our own operators, like this one here, then we can rename at any point to change the definition and all its usages, just like any other symbol. Next, C++14, which introduced the digit separator for use with numeric literals, making it easier to read these long numbers, especially these binary digits here. We're pleased to say this is now recognised by C-Line 2 and no longer gets highlighted as an error. Now, overload resolution has been tricky to get right and while C-Line has always done quite well, there have been some challenging edge cases that we're steadily working through. And in this release, we handle variadic templates and so correctly resolve to the right overload here. We're also doing better at detecting when an overload resolution is ambiguous, as in these cases here, and in this case where there's no matching overload. And we've made other improvements to the code analysis. For example, while unused variable detection is very useful, you may have noticed in the past that some uses of RAII, like this lock guard here, would also trigger these warnings. You'll be pleased to know that we now do the deeper analysis on the code necessary to detect these usages and avoid flagging them. We now also recognize additional keywords that affect warnings. For example, this built-in unreachable here means that because this case is never reached, we don't need to warn about the missing return value. And not forgetting the C11 standard, we now understand underscore generic, and so won't warn about valid code like this. And we offer completions for Fred Local, Alliance, No Return, Static Assert, and Atomic. Now, CMake. There are a couple of new global preferences for CMake, starting with configuration. Now this represents a change in the generation workflow, and while it means that we can't rapidly switch configurations in the editor, it does mean that we don't generate all configurations up front, so this is a time and space saving. A large project should start up a lot faster. And we now let you supply the path where internal build files are generated. This defaults to an in-source path, based on the configuration you've chosen, but you can override this with an absolute path, or something relative to the project route. We can now also open a project from an existing generated files folder by opening cmakecache.txt. This saves having to regenerate these files and again can be a big saving for larger projects. And if your cmake files are not in the project root, you'll be offered a chance to change the project root folder as well. And finally for cmake, there's a redesigned cmake tools window which has a combined output view, and cmakecache.txt can be viewed and edited in a full editor window. Sometimes we read code that has a number of different variables in play at once. It'd be nice if we can more easily follow them. Well now we can with semantic highlighting. Go to the editor preferences and under colors and fonts, language default semantic highlighting, you can enable this option and now, each different variable name gets its own unique colour, helping you to follow its flow through the code. Doxygen support has been extended to handle template arguments using the tparam tag. These fields now participate in rename refactorings, both from the code and from the comment. The log view window has been reorganized so that the message detail pane is now on the right, leaving more vertical space for commit messages. Notice also that the commits are aligned on the left, even with some deep branching. And also the tags and branch names have moved to the right, but you can still see longer commit messages if you hover over them. Now, when you make a new commit, there's a new option for sign off, which is very useful for some repository workflows. Having committed locally, there's also a new context menu item, undo commit, which does exactly that. 
Now, this is different to a soft reset because while your changes are still there, they've automatically been added to a new change list. So if we commit that again, we can now see what happens when we go to merge from another branch. And in this case, we have a conflict. Now it's on the same line, but in non-overlapping characters. So now there's a new tool here that can handle this type of conflict in a single click. And one more new feature for Git is a new view for managing remotes. This lets you edit and delete existing remotes, as well as adding new ones. Customizing code fonts just got a lot easier. First notice that we no longer have to duplicate a default font scheme before we can change it. Instead, we have a reset button over here that will take us back to the original default. Notice also that one of the bundled fonts now is Vera Code. This font supports ligatures, so if we enable that, and go to the code, then we can see that certain pairs of characters are now rendered using special glyphs. And if you're on Mac OS Sierra, C-Line is now fully compatible, and the issue with tool windows scrolling too fast is now fixed. Also on Sierra, the default font for menus and toolbars is now San Francisco, so C-Line will look right at home on your desktop. Now of course there are many more features, fixes and improvements in this release, including extending remote debugging support to Windows and a number of workflow performance improvements to supporting Unreal Engine.